So in this first section, we're going to be focusing on looking at Velotti. Looking at Velotti is the centre's child protection simulation that focuses on tackling child sexual exploitation. And we follow 14 year old Lottie as she is groomed by an 18 year old male Jack. So this is um, looking at for Lottie and I'm going to select new game. There are two different modes within Lottie. There's the um, class and professional mode. The difference being the questions that you're asked at the bottom of the screen. So for the purposes of today, I'm going to select the, the class that can be used in direct work with children and young people. Now we'll see that Lottie is split across seven different chapters. And in the eighth chapter, we meet Jack, the groomer and see what's happening for him up until the point where he first meets Lottie. So we'll go in and we'll meet Lottie in chapter one. So we click through as if we're logging into Lottie's computer and we can see that there are four different social media sites for Lottie. So we've got the hashtag for your Twitter feed. There is Pictogram, similar to an Instagram feed. And there is iSocialike, which is similar to a Facebook style feed. Main difference being is that we run things in chronological order because we want to tell a story, but it's still got the, the different kinds of posts and we've still got the comments underneath and crucially you can see the date and time of the post that we have here. So we're seeing here it's the 18th of January and um, Lottie is feeling quite happy. We have the mood bar that runs alongside here. So this is an opportunity to have a conversation about what is happening um, underneath is it really is it reflecting what the posts are saying on top so here we can see that Lottie is feeling happy and our post is reflecting that she is feeling happy um, and then as we're scrolling down we're learning different things about Lottie's life um, she's checked in at the rec we see pictures of hers with her friends um, there's Chloe in the middle there Chloe is her best friend um, we see her posting on um, hashtag we see her mood dropping around homework and these are the images I wanted to, to first look at today. Um, so we're focusing on this in this short presentation around um, image sharing and creating safe spaces for conversations around it. Now, I think it's really important to highlight at the moment um, in the pandemic with lots of online schooling, children are spending an increasing amount of time online, um, often um, in their rooms. And um, this is where a lot of their socialising is taking place as well as their, their online learning. And it can be that children can feel disinhibited, they can feel safe when they're communicating online. And it may be that it's so frequent that they're sharing um, images online, they don't even give it a, a second thought. I know with things like um, snap, snap streaks, it seems to be the thing that you, you get a, a snap streak and you click an image and you send an image of your face back. So it's a very common way um, that children have of communicating. Um, what we're really focusing on today is uh, the sharing of um, nudes or inappropriate images um, and also um, self-generated child abuse content that um, is being shared quite widely online. Um, Internet Watch Foundation um, reported last in October of last year a big rise in self-generated images that they're seeing being created and this might be, um, it, it's possible that it could initially um, appear as if it's consensual, there might be extortion, there might be blackmail, there's there could be lots of different things that are going on behind this. So this we see Lottie in her bedroom. There's another photo of Lottie there in her bedroom as well. Um, and we also um, we have WeTube and we have private messages that, that go on behind the scenes as well. But I think we'll skip forward in Lottie's story and have a look at some of those features. So this is um, chapter one, I'm excited about going to the under 18s disco. Chapter two, she's gone to the under 18s disco. She's met this lad called Jack outside and they've exchanged numbers and she's feeling quite excited about it. Chapter three, this um, is about her meeting up with Jack and how she can safely meet up with him um, and different things that she needs to consider. And there we see chapter four, Jack and Lottie are in a relationship. So we click into Lottie's computer again um, and we're considering here that this is the 5th of February, the under 18th disco was on the 24th of January. So um, gives us an idea of the, the time scale that's important to, to focus on. So there are also the, um, the private messages that are going on behind the scenes. 
So this is her message with Jack. Um, and we can see here the frequency of that conversation. Now, when Lottie was written, we knew that often groomers would be in contact with um, the, the, the people that they were grooming and it would be after school, it would be first thing in the morning. However, in the pandemic, I think it's reasonable to assume that there's now a lot more access to um, children online and groomers will be aware of that. Groomers are often very smart about the way that they work. Um, we can see here Jack talking about what a great time he had um, and um, he wishes he could see more of her um, and then he's talking about wanting to see more of her body um, and he's requesting special pictures um, and this is on the 5th of February. Lottie's feeling um, uncertain about that and feeling embarrassed about it. He's trying to reassure her that there's nothing to be embarrassed about um, and you're really beautiful. Um, she's still not sure so he sort of backs off a bit and talks about meeting up a bit. They're going to arrange to meet up at the, um, the coffee shop and then he comes in again with I really want you babes. Um, so there's this constant tap 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 and pressure there that's on Lottie to um, share those images. Now we also have within this, we have WeTube. And WeTube allows us to see into Lottie's world. Some of her videos are public videos and some of them are private videos. So it's a bit like a video diary entry. So let's hear from Lottie. He's so cute. He keeps on taking me places and buying me presents. I never thought I'd be with someone that made me feel like this, like a princess. Every time I'm with him, I feel so much more mature, so much older, and he treats me like an adult. All the girls his age send his mates pictures of themselves, and, well, he's asked me to send pictures of myself in my underwear. It's a bit weird, but, but everyone's doing it, right? And I just want to make him feel happy. What if he doesn't like the way I look? So we can see there that um, Lottie is not at all sure about the request that she's had from um, Jack and the different things that are at play for her in terms of her concerns around sharing of those images. Um, so the thing about Lottie is that if you're using this directly with, um, with children and young people is that there you've given an example of a situation that Lottie finds herself in because it's a third party, third party um, social media, you often find that the children will like to um, get involved and, and judge around um, what Lottie's doing and what choices she's making. Um, and I think it's really important then that we use this conversation and this platform as an opportunity to to make sure that we are sharing information in the right way. It's really important that we challenge any kind of victim blaming that may go on within the, the learning in these kinds of sessions. Now, there is some fantastic resources on the Think You Know website. As I say, I'll be sharing all of these um, in an email with you, those of you that are attending the, the webinar. Um, and this talks about challenging victim blaming um, attitude. Um, and it gives a breakdown of what it might look like in the um, um, in the classroom and um, there's um, step by step things that, that you can touch on there. So it's about really unpacking what's going on and exploring what's happening for, um, for that individual. Um, from what we see within Lottie, we see that um, she's feeling under pressure because she um, thinks she's in a relationship with an older boy. Um, and he's providing lots of flattery. So she's feeling under pressure around that. Um, and it's really important as well is that we make it clear around um, what the sources of support are around this. Um, and knowing where you can go to get help, what help you may be providing in the environments that you're working in, um, and also what um, help and support that children can reach out to and get for themselves. Now you'll notice that I'm, um, or maybe notice that I'm using the term children a lot. Um, I think it's important that we are very careful about the language that we use, um, because it's about safeguarding um, children. Lottie is a 14 year old girl. She is therefore a child, um, and while she may be Preferred, preferred to be referred to as a young person in terms of us as safeguarding professionals she is a child and she needs the the, the protections of, of child safeguarding so that's why I choose to, to use the word child in this situation um, so 
let's just push on a bit further and have a look um, a bit further along um, at some of the, the issues um, at play here for Lottie. So she was feeling under pressure to, um, to share the images um, and there's the conversations around that. There is um, Valentine's Day um, and there are gifts the, um, that come along. Um, he ends up um, meeting mum when Lottie can no longer keep her relationship a secret. And then I'd like to just show you um, one final video from Lottie in this last chapter from her here. And it's this one here where she's thinking about taking things further with Jack. Um, um, he's been sending her porn to normalise the, the sexualised behaviour. Um, so let's hear from Lottie again. Jack sent me this video and I'd only ever seen stuff like that on TV and in films, but this was actual real life. Like, Jack, so mature and I know he loves me, but we've only ever kissed and the thought of going further... I'm not sure I'm ready. I didn't want him thinking I was a stupid young girl, so I told him I was cool with it. Just keep on thinking about those stupid photos and who might have seen them. What if my mum's seen them? What if someone's told her about them? Oh God. So we see there that um, Lottie has now um, shared the images and this is where it can be really important to, um, to talk about what you can do if you um, have shared images because it's important. I think we have the message of don't do it in that kind of safety, but it's um, it's really important as well. If we have the messages of if, if you have done something, then it's important to, um, to talk to someone about it um, and it's important to deal with it. And there are lots of different ways of doing this. There are lots of different organizations that can help. Um, of course, there's um, CEOP where you can report information. Um, there is this fantastic fantastic guide um, it is um, so you got naked online um, and this is a resource directly for um, children and young people in language that they'll understand um, and it breaks it down and it provides sources of support um, so I recommend um, looking that up so you got naked online from the southwest grid for learning um, and there's also all sorts of other resources online. It's very much worth bearing in mind um, Childline as well. Often when people think about Childline, they can think about it as being a resource um, only for younger children. You can contact Childline up until your 19th birthday and there are different ways to do this through directly calling in, um, setting up online chats and there's also a wealth of information there as well. So it's a really, really good resource. Um, and of course there is the reporting through um, through CEOP, there is reporting through the Internet Watch Foundation. Um, there's a lot of really great information um, on Internet Watch Foundation's website. Um, and there is um, a report from saying from October 2020 talking about the self generated um, sexual abuse content that's being created and shared by um, children online. Um, so it's it's really important that we have these conversations, um, very frank conversations sometimes with the children that we're working with. So we need to strike a really careful balance because we need to create that open, safe space to have the dialogue like we've seen by examining Lottie's behaviour, as well as being aware of the dangers and what can happen to um, to images um, once they're shared. And we know that, um, you know, there, there are ways if you can report them um, on the different, um, directly on the sites. Um, and there's also advice around, um, what they say, burying content and creating more social media content to um, stack it up on top. So there's all sorts that can be done. So I think it's kind of getting that across in a really safe way. It's also really important for those of you that are in a safeguarding role as well, that you're aware of the guidance around um, sharing of nudes and semi-nudes. Um, so there's government um, advice and guidance um, on this. So it's important to be aware of all of this. Um, and it's important to be able to um, have the conversations with the um, children and young people that we are working with. So that's just touched on um, very briefly um, some of the issues around um, image sharing and some of the ways that you can create um, conversations with the children and young people that you're working with.